All right, what's going on everybody? So this is my impressions for the Anthem VIP demo. So I was in the Anthem Alpha and obviously I wanted to talk about the game since I played that and tell people uh, how impressed I was, but obviously that game was under strict NDA and uh, embargo and we couldn't really uh, speak about it publicly, but I tried to tell people as much about it as I could then. So now we have the Anthem uh, VIP demo and pretty much this VIP demo made me just capitalized on my initial feelings from, from the alpha. And I, I'm, I'm very excited for this game. Now first, let's tackle the, the fact, the technical issues. From a technical standpoint, this, this demo was a, a failure. This, they shouldn't have called it a demo. This was a stress test. That's what it, that's what it should have been, a beta or a stress test. Because if it's a demo, it's an absolute failure. Like most people couldn't get in. Um, I wasn't able, I wasn't able to uh, get in until la like midday yesterday, right? So that's definitely a bad look, and it put a lot of it put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth that this is a game that they were interested in, but they couldn't even get to play the demo. I believe uh, the demo will go live again. The servers will go live again next weekend because they are currently down now as I'm speaking. Um, but I, I understand it put a, a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. The only positive way you can look at the demo being a failure is hopefully you know EA and Bioware they're gonna look at this and be like listen the, the game cannot be like this at launch we have to have a smooth launch if this game has a smooth launch then people won't be talking about all the technical problems they're gonna be talking about your actual game so hopefully they pr prioritize uh, the just solving any problems that stop people from getting an infinite load load screen stop anybody from not being able to uh, you know actually match make and, and, and get into the actual game they need to focus on all that and stability now getting to talk about the actual gameplay of Anthem um, let me just say that yes I'm very impressed by the game I, I think the gameplay specifically is very very fun and, and it just feels amazing to play right and and there's been a lot of comparisons on what this game is, right? And I disagree with the comparisons most people are making. Most people are, are, are comparing it to Destiny. It, the only way this game is even similar to Destiny, in my opinion, is that it's a looter shooter. But just because a game is in the same genre doesn't mean it's similar in any other ways. Because this game, to me, visually, gameplay-wise, or any other way, any other way, or any other dimension, other than it being in the same genre, that's there's it, it's not comparable to destiny in my opinion um the shooting mechanics i would compare that to division the traversal i can't really think of a game that i would directly compare this to other than to say like it feels like you you've been given like iron man uh flight capabilities that's how it honestly feels and the visuals i would compare it to mass effect that you know that's how i, I feel like i feel like you combine mass effect Iron Man, The Division, and some parts of the game also remind me of, you know, uh, Titanfall, obviously, with the mechs, you know, they're called Javelins and everything like that. So those are, I guess, the four games I would say I see uh, that this game was influenced by. The hub, the hub world, I guess you can say, is another way uh, it is comparable to Destiny is the hub world. And I feel like th these games in this genre have not really figured out hub worlds well they haven't really designed great hub worlds because the hub world in this game even though it's a demo uh we haven't seen the the extent of it i feel like the hub world is trash the performance the technical performance in the hub world is, is pretty bad that definitely needs to be stabilized you can't run in the hub world which is a real pet peeve of mine is when developers don't allow you to goddamn run in in for for whatever reason i can't see why you would not be able to run in that hub world you you're walking through molasses it moves so goddamn slow i cannot stand it they need to change that i need to be able to run in the hub world besides that i i don't really see any any real value in the hub world besides you know it's it's a way to get from one place to uh, one mission to another um, and maybe just get some miss mission information, a little bit of story elements. That's, that's what it seems like. But I'm not very impressed by, by the hub world. The traversal is is great in this game, which is, you know, which is the flight. It makes you feel just so free and, and powerful. And some people, I think, downplay how, how, how uh, significant and how much traversal can impact the game. Because on Weapon World last night, I made the point that... 
Spider-Man, for example, even Spider-Man had a lot of subpar side missions or subpar missions in general, missions that weren't fun. But the reason why so many people got the platinum in that game or just did so many of the missions in that game, even though they weren't the missions themselves weren't fun, is because it was fun getting to the missions. People enjoyed the web swinging, no matter what they were doing, the, the web swinging made the game wholly fun, no matter where you were, because that was like the, the core gameplay uh, mechanic that you had to use to get to any mission, even though the missions weren't fun. So the fact that the traversal in this game, you know, the flying feels so good, I do think, it, you know, it's, it's an important element and that should not be slept on. Um, but yeah, flying feels so good. You can you can barrel roll. Even the ground movement itself just feels satisfying. You know, it, it's just very satisfying and, and complimentary. Now, flying does have a cooldown, and depending on what javelin you use, and um, I believe if you get uh, attacked by enemies too much, that will uh, in, uh, increase your your cooldown, and you'll have to have to wait for it to be able to take flight again. I do think overall. Uh, they do need to uh, extend uh, extend uh, the time in which you you can uh, hover or or take flight because I understand that they're doing it for balance. If there was no cooldown, you would have no reason to touch the ground at all. You could shoot from everywhere and you know be almost you know almost uh, invincible to certain certain attacks. So I understand they do it for balance, but you also have to balance fun. And making you know the characters not feel I guess too overpowered, so I do think they should uh, you know extend how long uh, each character can flight. And like I said, it depends on the javelin and and, and other things. Um, combat to me feels very it just it just feels satisfying. Um, I and I think part of what makes it so satisfying is the sound effects. I think sound effects like you know the just the the gun quality is something that's very important in games because that can make the difference to me at least in whether or not I feel like the shooting is fun is the, is the feedback from the sound that the guns make. Weak gun sounds can make it seem like you're just shooting plastic. Shooting the enemies in this game to me aren't isn't necessarily where the where I say the satisfaction mostly comes from, but I think it's the gun sounds because they're so robust and strong that makes it feel satisfying. There's different ways to make shooting an enemy uh uh, feel satisfying in different games and I think this game does it by the way of, of the sound effects which are you know very impressive um, so the combat you know you got your primary weapon your melee uh, your s secondary weapon you have your dodge you can you know dodge in the air while you're hovering you can barrel roll uh, you know ground dodge and everything like that and you have like your special special heavy attack which you you know the, the, your meter fills up by killing enemies and most likely by doing other th other other things, uh, and I believe all this stuff is like customizable, um, depending on on the javelin and everything like that. Each javelin has different strengths, uh, abilities, weaknesses, and and, and all of that, um, and all of these things you know have cooldowns. You know you got your your ordnance or or your grenade. Uh, Special, you know, all of these pretty, all pretty much all of these weapons besides your primary weapons have cooldown. So you can't just go necessarily go in there guns blazing because a lot of these enemies uh, can overwhelm, over, overwhelm you. So there's a bit of a you know strategy to it rather you know rather than just flat out just holding down the R1 button and shooting um, at all these waves of, of enemies. Um, I, all the enemy types I've come across, I can't say I'm necessarily impressed with the enemy enemy types yet, but I guess I'll ha obviously have to play more of the game and get deeper into in the game to see what exactly is offered. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of, of co-op games, right? Um, you know, these four-player co-op games. I'm not the biggest fan because some, you know, I, sometimes I just like to play games alone and not have to work with other people when it comes to co-op. I like playing with other people in PvP modes, but I don't really like working with other people in, in, in co-op modes. But I think, and so the way I measure games like this is how fun is it to play alone? Because if a game is fun to play alone, it's probably gonna be fun to, to play in co-op. But if a game is only fun when you're playing with three other people, then the gameplay itself isn't necessarily fun. You're not necessarily having fun playing the game. You're having fun interacting with others. 
And I don't like games like that. Like, if if the fun is gone, if you're playing alone, then I don't want to play that game. You get what I'm saying? Because the game is solely relying on the interactiveness and, and you playing with other people rather than the merits of the of the gameplay itself. And I, I played this game by myself. I had a ton of fun. I never got tired of it. And I so that was a good sign for me. And then I played it with uh, you know, one other one other player for a short time, and it was it w- it was more fun. So the fact that, like I said, I, I enjoyed playing this game by myself and didn't have to rely on a crutch of a whole bunch of other people to have fun was another great sign for me. Um, now let me address the content, because a lot of people, you know, are I I want to I want to make it accurate what I'm saying. Right, because I'm enjoying the gameplay of this. In no way am I saying that I believe this game is going to have enough content when it releases to keep people there for a long time. I, I, I actually don't think it will. And the fact that it doesn't have PvP might also hurt it. Definitely, it's possible. So all my praise is going towards the actual gameplay. My praise, you know, obviously I won't know if this game will have a lot of content when the game comes out. It might not. I, I'm I don't debate that in any way in any way at all they could come out with the game could be very short on content when it releases all I know is the game is fun to play that is that is all I'm saying I I, I feel like it's rewarding I feel like it's just satisfying and you know I, I know a lot of people are skeptical um, of games like this understand somewhat understandably so I think some people are just doubting the game uh, for other reasons that are not justified and I, and I guess I'll get, I'll get to that but I understand people being being skeptical I get that I don't doubt that the game you know I, I'm definitely not saying that there's gonna be enough content enough content there I'm not doubting that at all um, now from a tech from going back to like the technical standpoint as you can see I had MSI afterburner and Reva tuner um, running to see how the game performed. I had the game running. This this is the game running at ultra. Of course, I could have turned it down to like medium or high and gotten a, a stable 60 frames, but I just wanted to see how optimized it was and how my 1080, I don't even have a 1080 Ti, I have a 1080. I just want to see how well the 1080 uh, would handle it. Kind of like a stress test benchmark. And pretty much I was getting everything from uh, 35 uh, to 55, obviously, when more enemies were on screen and when it was busier, you know, you got into the lower. Uh, and this is at 1440p, by the way. So, yeah, you can clearly see how the game was performing. I expect when I expect the full game, uh, even at Ultra, to perform, I would say, sig- uh, noticeably better. And plus, if uh, when NVIDIA releases some, some drivers, that will help it also. I don't think it's gonna be a solid uh, 60 even after that on Ultra, but I, I I don't I don't expect this game. I don't think this game should be dropping into the to the low into the you know high 30s or even low 40s. I don't think so. I don't think it should be doing that. I definitely think they can optimize it more to definitely run better. Um, and you know also the loading screens. Uh, it doesn't seem like those are gonna go away because when you move into different sections of the map in the missions, you definitely have those loading screens, which we've been spoiled by a lot of games that you know are a lot of games that are very large and they don't have loading screens. So uh, we, you know, that is something that we expect moving forward. You know, from 2019 on, uh, we definitely expect uh, games like this to not have loading screen because we don't want to be interrupted. Right? We want it to be seamless, and a game like this would be better uh, if it's seamless. I'm not saying no loading spe- screens at all, but sometimes, you know, in the same mission, you'll go from one part of the map to another, which doesn't seem like it even should have a loading screen, but it but it has one. Um, and the, I like how they kept the HUD pretty minimal. You know, it is, it is not too much stuff on on your on your screen that you, that you have to look at. Um, they kept it very minimalistic, which, can, you know, it, it's very easy to put too much stuff on the screen in a game like this. And I think there are some settings that you can, uh, you can even make it more, more minimal, I, I, I believe. So, and the game looks visually gorgeous. I haven't even talked about the visuals yet. Just, it just, it just looks stunning. It looks, it looks crispy, clean. You know, the environment, um, just the detail of of the world, and just the the vibrancy 
uh, with, with the colors, everything pops. I, this is an absolute, go absolutely gorgeous game. Absolutely gorgeous. Even, you know, the mesh, uh, you know, foliage, all of it. Um, the enemy types don't seem to be the most detailed. They do seem somewhat uh, basic and generic in their design. But overall, this is a, this, the presentation of this game is gorgeous. The particle effects, lighting, shadows, all of it. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful, man. It's it's just a clean, nice presentation. Um, and like I said, since I only got to play midday yesterday and I played as much as I could, I didn't get to experience everything, unfortunately. So there's certain aspects of the game I still cannot cannot speak speak on because I haven't gotten that deep. So those are pretty much my first impressions. And the last thing I, you know I really want to say on this is... I feel like besides the fact that, uh, you know, the demo had poor performance and everything like that, I understand those criticisms. But even before the demo, people were kind of like expecting this game to be bad. Some people even wanted it to be bad or expecting it to fail or flop. And a lot of that honestly comes from the fact that, you know, EA is publishing this game. And if we're keeping it, keeping it real, some people don't know how to separate their feelings about EA from a game published by EA. Like, you should judge a game based on its own merits, not on who the publisher is. Like, I get it, EA is the, once again, EA is the big bad publisher that everybody hates. But that has nothing to do with the products they make. As I've said, bad companies make great products sometimes. It happens, it's just a fact of life. So some people are really like hating on this game and, and want it to fail and all this stuff. So all I'm saying is judge a game based on its own merits of the game, not by the reputation of its developer or publisher. And as far as the story goes in this game, you know, don't really have any idea of what the plot, the concept, or the, the narrative or the story is of, of the game. Um, I think, you know, demos are typically more made for you to get an idea of the gameplay. As far as the story goes, we'll, we can find out more about that when the game comes out. So, you know, I wasn't necessarily looking um, to get a deep understanding of, of what the story is. And in my opinion, story in these type of games, in certain genres, stories are not as important. Okay? S story is more important in some genres. I'm not saying it, it doesn't matter at all. It definitely matters. But in these type of games, I think it matters less in my opinion. So... Um, yeah, that's my my impressions on Anthem. Let me know what y'all think about this. Uh, make sure you hit the like button to support. Uh, links in the description for everything. You know, follow me on Twitch so you can uh, know when I'm live streaming and uh, know when I'm doing anything else.